We're gonna catch some fish in this video. We can't go two videos without catching a fish. So I'm downsizing a little bit. We're making a cricket. It's a little lure, but still a giant cricket. What is it? It's one and a quarter inches long. So yeah, that's like, that's a tiny crankbait. It's gonna have one treble hook. I'm actually gonna try to do legs coming off of this guy. I think that's gonna look really cool. It's gonna be some absolutely tiny carving for this wooden part. I'm not even sure if I'm gonna get this to be wooden or not. It's gonna be held together by a wire, a stainless steel wire, and pinned into the body. But yeah, that'll be interesting. Oh, you guys weren't supposed to see that. We're gonna save this for later. Chip, don't bump the camera. Nothing like a brand new bandsaw blade. So, I'm about to cut the lip slot on this Cricut, and before I do that, it's always good to make sure your bandsaw blade is at 90 degrees. That'll work. So the body of the cricket has all been blocked out. And I was looking at this thing and what I'm thinking is that what's really going to make this bait, I think is this leg. I have to be able to do this right. Otherwise it's just going to look like a normal one piece body crankbait with nothing else but that leg. It's gonna make it or break it, I think. And I plan on making the legs out of this thin sheet of poplar and uh, thin wire. It's gonna be pretty meticulous. So I intend for these to be the meaty part of the legs, and then I'm still gonna have a wire running through the middles of these parts, and then the foot's gonna come down here and then bend back up. This is gonna be the slot that the wire just gets set into, just like that. And then the wire is gonna be bent in the shape of the leg. These tiny pieces, I might just glue on. I don't know. They're so small, I might not be able to do anything with them. We'll see. But now, it's time to start carving the body to look more like a cricket. Yeah, crickets really don't have that much going on when it comes to the body. It's a pretty symmetrical shape with just shallow carvings really to do. This shouldn't be too difficult. So this will be a form that I use to bend the wire around and that'll make each leg exactly the same. Mm. 
might be able to see how that's going to kind of look already. So there's where I'm at with the two legs. That back piece, it ended up being way too small. I can't do anything with it. I'm going to have to figure out something else, like maybe tie some string around this end to bulk it up a little bit. But these two wooden pieces, they turned out good. I'll be able to use that. I have some really basic details on this cricket now. I'm going to start carving. When you're working with stuff this small, you even have to be careful when you're scoring lines. You can pull out wood grain. Even if you have a really sharp knife and you're being careful, it's, it's super easy to accidentally pull some wood grain out. This is aspen wood too. It has a really soft grain structure. So what I'm trying to say is I'm having to be real careful. Taking breaks is a good thing. So I got the eyeballs carved out. I got this shoulder plate detail carved out. I got where the wings are gonna be and I got the belly. I'm gonna cut the lip out now. This little cricket's gonna have an aluminum lip. I'm just going to cut it out with some 10 snippers. I haven't really come up with a size or shape yet. I'm just going to give it a standard, uh, just round shaped lip. That's going to be the size and the profile. So I'm just gonna get it close, but I'm not gonna cut on the line. I'm gonna file and sand to the line. Cause if you cut right on the line, you're gonna get some bend over and it's not gonna look that clean. It's not gonna look straight really on the edges. That's what it'll look like. I sealed that slot over with some five minute epoxy and some filler. And now I'm just carving the wooden part out to look more like cricket legs. I have no idea if this is what a cricket's face looks like because I couldn't find a good picture of like a really detailed cricket face but this is what I came up with and this is what I'm going with. Save this part for last because this line is so close to something that's already been cut and I don't want it to like chip out so I'm going to be really careful about scoring this second line. I don't know if you can see that, but there's that tiny piece right there that's wanting to come off. You just need to shove it back in place like that, and then I'm just gonna put some super glue on that so it stays. There. I think the last little detail on this cricket will be to score some little wing marks that I have right there. I think I'll be done carving the detail into it after that. There we go. I got it all carved out and sanded down as much as I can get it. What I have to do now is drill out uh, a small little lead hole. This bait, it's only gonna need like two drops of lead in it, like very, very little lead. Just to get it to sit upright, I don't want it to sink. And you gotta be re really careful with small baits like these if you want them to float. How much lead you put in them really matters. So I'm gonna use a Dremel 
and I got a little cylindrical burr bit and that's what I'm going to use to drill out the lead hole. The aluminum lip and the hooks on this bait may have been enough to weigh this bait down so it sits upright in the water. But just to be safe, I drilled that lead hole. So after I seal it, I can add the lead and then I can test it. And if the lead is too much, I can always drill it out and just fill the hole. Next step, uh, I gotta drill some pilot holes. I gotta add the legs. Actually, I have to finish making the legs and then add the legs and then put this whole thing together, kind of mock fit it, take it back apart, and then I'm gonna seal all the wood. So I'm thinking to uh, bulk up this leg a little bit, the wire part that's supposed to be like the second half of the leg. I'm just gonna wrap string around it until it's bulky enough. And I think that'll do a really good job of mimicking a cricket leg. Oh, and when it comes to like fly tying and this sort of stuff, I'm like, really, I don't know what I'm doing. Uh, please bear with me. I noticed on crickets that they have little spines that stick off the back of the legs going this way. I don't know if I should try to mimic that with something somehow, like somehow add string that comes out. I'm gonna see what I can do. I don't know, that might have just worked. I might just try to do that a few times. It seems like that worked. That was some crystal flashaboo that I just added and tried to tie in. I'm trying to like super glue it in place first so it don't move. There. I think I'm gonna go for one more. There, three little spines off that leg. That'll look good, I think. Now I just have to do it on the other one. There, that's both legs. Focus. That's both of the legs stuck in. That's pretty cool. So I'm gonna seal up this bait with some wood sealer, and then I'll be back tonight, put some weight in it, test it out, and then get it ready to paint. Good evening. Time to play with molten lead. So there's the cricket put together. Um, I don't have small enough hooks in the shop right now to test this lure with the hooks that it will have, but I'm gonna use these. And first of all, we're going to see how it floats with no weight in it at all. It doesn't. But it does float with no hooks on it at all. Just like that. That put me in a bit of a pickle. It definitely sits upright. The lip and the hooks were definitely enough to have this bait sit stably upright in the water, but it was sinking. I'm gonna have a lot smaller hooks on it when it's done, and I'm gonna have to put a very thin clear coat on it, it seems now. I think what I have to do is uh, do my best to make this still float, but if it ends up being a, a countdown crankbait, that's okay. I'm gonna finish this bait for sure because it just looks too cool to not. I'm just mixing up some five minute epoxy now to fill that uh, hole that I drilled in earlier. So I think what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go to the store, I'm gonna pick up the correct sized hooks for this bait because they will be smaller and that will reduce how much this bait wants to sink. And then if it doesn't float after that, I'm actually gonna shave down aluminum on the lip, I think, until I can get it to float. So I'm back from the store. I got the right sized hooks for this bait now, and I haven't checked, but I'm gonna go see how it does in the test tank now. Thank goodness it floats. I just kinda realized something. The place that the steel wire legs go into the body, they're anchored in kind of at the bottom in that hole right there. And I think that's weighing the bottom of the bait down and that's why it sits so stable without any lead in it. That along with the lip too. And to reduce weight, I took some material off of the back of the lip too and I made the whole lip shorter. Now it just looks like that. I think that's still gonna catch enough water to get it to crank, but uh, I'm hoping that helps a little. Possibly get this bait to float after the clear coat. That's my goal. I got this Cricut all assembled 
all the hardware is put in, the lips put in. I'm gonna put one more coat of polyurethane on this and I'm gonna paint it. Never used this water-based polyurethane before. I'm gonna give it a shot with this lure. Seems really thick. It looks like crickets, they can have more of a tan color, like a brownish, and then they can be really just dark and black, and then maybe even a little bit of maroonish color to them. Figuring out what I want to go with right now. That one's cool. So is that one. I think I want to kind of add some red and also keep it dark. I'm going to use this as a reference photo. It's ma The majority of it's dark, but I'm going to add the color I want here and there. That'll look good. That's how I'm gonna hold onto this bait while I paint it, a little clamp on the lip. I'm actually gonna start out by painting the whole thing black, and then I'm gonna go back with a pearlized silver to lighten that up a little bit. Painting it black first, and then coming back with silver over the black makes it so you can see all the detail again. Otherwise, it would've just looked like a black blob. I'll be able to put some color on this now too, and because of the silver behind it, you'll be able to see a little bit of color. So I'm gonna do on the top of the Cricut a really, really light coat of iridescent purple. I'm gonna take the iridescent purple and I'm gonna go to an iridescent red really lightly on the sides so it's kind of like a color change when you tilt it and look at it. That's a good start. I'm gonna brush some detail onto this bait now. I think I realized what this bait's missing. In the picture you can kind of see along the top, there's a little bit of gold in there. That's what it needs is some gold, I think. That looks good. I'm gonna go back under on the belly and I'm gonna spray very lightly some black to set the belly off from the top of the body. Adding all the tiny details with the brush right now. I have no idea where to sign this bait. Maybe just on the side right there. Actually, I'm gonna sign it on the back of the lip. So now I just need to super glue the legs in before I do the clear coat. I'm gonna do the clear coat with the legs on so it kinda envelops them and really keeps them securely to the body. There's one. Man, that looks good. There it is. Ready for clear coats now. Last step. Clear coat. I'm definitely only putting one clear coat on this bait, but since this is 30 minute epoxy, that's plenty. It goes on really thick. This is difficult. I gotta get clear coat in that tiny crevice between the lip and the head and try not to just glob it onto the lip. Using a tiny brush for this bait, just to make sure I get it everywhere. There's spots I don't want clear coat to be too. On the legs where I was doing the, the string and the tying, I'm not gonna clear coat that because I super glued it along the way and it's really secure already. But the wooden part of the legs, I am gonna clear coat. That was definitely one of the more complicated baits I've ever clear coated. 
but it turned out good. Before I go out and fish with this cricket, there's one last little detail I need to add to it. I'm gonna put the antennas on its head with some little flash boost string, just glue them in. It is a super small little detail, but it's something you notice right away. There's the finished cricket. Last night I had Chelsea tie me a feather treble for this bait. Kind of add the, the two little things that come off the back. Because on crickets, they have what looks like two antennas coming off the back. So that matches really nice, I think. But there it is. Time to go fishing. Oh, and by the way, it floats. Every bait that I make, I give away on my Patreon channel. Every dollar pledged on there is a chance to win every bait that I made that month. The end of the month is coming up right now, so it's getting close to a, a giveaway. So if you're interested in a chance to win these baits and helping out the channel, go support me on my Patreon. And if you're not a Patreon supporter, still thank you for watching. Thought I'd try out the pond first today. It dives down. It doesn't crank as well as I wanted it to. I think I needed it to have a bigger lip. But, oh, there's something. Oh, it just came off. I was talking to you guys. I wasn't setting the hook on that. Yeah, I'm kind of having to give it twitches for it to have kind of an action. Otherwise, it comes in pretty straight. There's something. A little bass. Tiny bass. But it's something. First fish. Yeah, even though it doesn't crank as good as I wanted it to, it still dives down and it still wants to change directions when you twitch it. So, in a weird kind of way, it's kind of like a jerk bait still. It works. I'll have to try another small bait like this again with legs and just an anatomically correct bug, but really try to get it to crank. I think the solution would be to uh, make it bigger, just in general. That way there's a lot more floating power in the wood and I can put some lead in it and I can give it a bigger lip. I think it'll crank then if I just do a bigger bug. There is a little creek back here that uh, this pond spills into. I think I'm gonna try it. I've caught chubs back here before to use them as bait, <laughs> but it might be fun to try to catch them with this cricket. Berries. Oh, these berries have thorns. I'm trying to put my camera over on this log. Ow! Okay, maybe I'm not going to. That is too painful. Now I know what 618 fishing has to deal with all the time with these tiny creeks. Respect. I'm just gonna let that sit there for a while. Ooh. Fish came out and hit it as soon as I started moving it. They're watching. Ooh, that looked like a little bass. That'd be cool if I got a bass back here. There was another hole on that creek to fish in, but somebody cut a tree down and it fell right over it, so I, I wasn't even gonna try. I'm going back to the pond now. Ooh, had a nibble there. This bee needs to go away. Got one. Little bluegill on the cricket. This is a really fun bait to fish with kind of because you have to impart your own action and that'll get the bites. There 
like something. Feels a little better. Another bass. Number three. Yeah, I think this will be the last cast here. Then I'm gonna go to a lake, see what I can catch there with this cricket. Got just a little bit of battery left, but the cricket caught some fish. Not at the lake here, but got the job done at least at the pond. This was a fun bait to fish with. Never fished with a cricket imitation lure. I already know what the next lure is I'm gonna make. Thanks to you guys, all the suggestions. It's easy now to think of things. Feel free to keep them coming. Once in a while, a really good idea pops in there and I have to write it down. On to the next bait.